Welcome to lesson 12 of DMAD Marine Mammal Research Association's free QGIS course. I'm Tim Albury and in today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can turn a raster into binary values. That is, we can select areas of our raster that are above a certain value and how we can turn this data into polygons that we can use elsewhere in our work. Okay, we'll dive right in. Okay, so this is how we left our last lesson. And I'm just going to remove these two layers because we don't need them anymore. OK. And OK. And you'll see that we've now got our original layer back. OK, that's great. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to look at how we can change our expression very slightly in our raster calculator to give us um, binary raster file okay so that is we have one and zero so two options either one or zero so i've typed this expression in um okay we've got a bit too much going on there and i'll do the same here so I've just pasted those expressions, but I'll explain to you what they mean. So what we've said here is we've taken our clip mask layer, which is the layer underneath. So this layer just here. Um, and we're saying that if the values are less than 1500, then we want to assign it a one. Um, and if the values are greater than 1500, then we're going to assign it a zero. Um, and you can say it's saying the expression is valid, but because I have not selected um, an output layer, then it won't let me click OK. So I'm going to go and create a new file because it's a new lesson. And I suggest you do the same because it just keep, helps keep everything together and it can be a really quick tool just to nip forwards and backwards between the lessons. So this is lesson 13. OK. And. Um, I'm going to say it a bit as MNE raster 1500 because that's what our split is. Um, again, we could change these values to whatever we wanted. So we could have all the values over, over 1500, but just as easily, we could have all the values over 500, over 300, over 2368 if we wanted. We can do whatever we want with this. So I've chosen 1500. Um, just as a random value but you could use whatever you wanted and we're just selecting all the area which has a higher elevation than this value okay so I click OK and you'll see we're now left with these two values here so I guess traditionally it would probably have been uh, better for me to set the 1 and the 0 the other way around so our values were that were over uh, 1500 meters had one and our values below it had zero but it's not the end of the world um, because it doesn't matter too much just uh, traditionally you'd normally have this as the one and the zero I've, I did that the wrong way around um, and what we're going to do in today's lesson now we've got these values is we're going to turn them into a polygon so how do I do that I go up to my raster toolbar I go raster conversion uh, and then I'm going to polygonize. So we've got two options here, polygonize or rasterize. Rasterize takes our vector and turns it into raster data and polygonize turns our raster into vector data. Names don't roll off the tongue particularly well, but that's what we've got. Okay, so you can see we're using this MNE raster layer um, and under vectorize, we've got the save to temporary file. I'm just going to call it a proper name because it's always useful to save these files. Um, go to QGIS lesson 13. And I'm just going to call it MNE 1500 uh, and leave it at that. And I click save and run. If I hadn't um, chosen a name for it, then I would have still been able to run it, and it would have been able to, it would have saved it as a scratch symbol. 
uh, scratch layer, sorry, which is just like a temporary layer. Um, that's fine if you're going to use it for something else, um, but it will delete those files as soon as you leave QGIS. Uh, the symbol for scratch layer is this one here. Um, so you can double click on these to, to save them if you need to, but make sure you are saving them if you're going to need them later. Okay, and now we've got our data, which is not particularly useful because um, we've just got everything over 1500 meters and we've also got everything underneath 1500 meters and it's all the same color. So one thing that we could do is we could uh, go into our symbology and we could, rather than having a single symbol, we could have categorize and then under value, we could just choose DN um, and sorry, classify. And you see that now we, we have all of our pink values and we have all of our yellow values. Um, for me, I'm not particularly interested in anything less than 1500 meters. So I don't actually need this yellow layer. I'm only interested in the pink layer. So what we can do is we can just go back to um, Go into our attribute table by right clicking on the layer and then we can just double click on dn um, and go down to where the layer is starts to one so here we go and we're just going to click edit select all the values that have one Okay, so I've selected these and I can just delete these values now. Untoggle editing by clicking the pencil again, click save and then close my um, attribute table and you'll see now I just have the areas where we've got more than 1500 meters um, and I'm going to change the color of that just because it's a bit close to uh, my other symbol for my country and then I'm going to turn these two rasters off and you'll see within my Montenegro country file I can very quickly see um, where the, the high areas of the country are, so all the areas over 1500 meters. Um, and this is just binary, so it's either over 1500 or it's not. It's not the same as the example I showed you the other day. Um, but yeah, we now have these as polygons and in the next lesson I'll show you how we can use that with the data. We um, calculated the other day just to um, just to refine our habitat model a bit more. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Bye.